Hey guys, how's it going and welcome back to Mario's World, the place where education meets fun. In this video, as per the title of this video, we're gonna be looking into seven streams of income and we're gonna find out what fits you best. So stay tuned to find out more. Number one is earned income. In other words, that is basically your job and the salary you get from it. There may be bonuses here and there, but basically you're trading your time for money, which is not ideal. In most cases, the quality of life is also not very high because of the circumstances. Maybe you don't enjoy your job as much, or maybe you're spending 10 hours instead of eight, but you're getting paid only for eight. Either way, whenever you trade your time for money, it's not ideal. And that's one of the incomes that everybody across the world have gotten at least once in their life. So in other words, make sure you have this in the short term or if it's by the means to get somewhere in the long term, but definitely that should be not your only source of income. Oh, and something I forgot to mention at the start of the video. Most millionaires or most successful people in general have at least three, if not even five sources of income. So make sure you find out which one suits you best. In this video, we're gonna discuss which ones are the ones that fit best your personality and your goals. Number two, that is profit income. In other words, you make money by selling something which is worth less than what you sold it for. Or in other words, you need to sell a product or a service, or as in other words, for the third time, you need to be entrepreneurial, however way you say it. You need to make sure that you have an idea that you can execute, build a team, make and, and do whatever you need to do, get some funding if you need some funding, maybe go public and so on and so on. But the whole idea is that you have a business you're starting to trade less of your time for the money that you're gonna be making. You'll be able in the long run to save more of your time and still earn money because there's gonna be a successor for your business and that will become a fully passive income source for you. And one of the best things for this specific income is that you'll be able to do what you love either way. Why would you start a business if you don't think that there's gonna be any benefit for your personal development as well? Obviously, everybody loves making money. Don't you love making money? Make sure you leave a comment down below whether you love making money or you just like making money. Number three, and that is interest income. That is one of the first passive incomes that you can have. And this is one of the first that we're gonna be mentioning in this video. But basically this one, you're getting money based on the amount of money you've put somewhere else. Or in other words, for borrowing someone else's money, for example, when you wanna buy a house, you're taking a mortgage. Therefore, you need some money from the bank or whatever the other institution is. And you'll have to pay back that interest in time, meaning you're paying them because you borrowed their money. That is the tax, if we may say so, or that is also the, the cost of you taking this amount of money. But the whole idea of the income, of this specific interest income, is that you don't have to think about it. You put your money somewhere and you're gaining interest. And some, some ways that you can do this is leaving your money at the bank in an interest saving account and you'll be gaining interest. But because the current interest rates of Bank of England, for example, the National Bank of England, obviously, currently has almost negative, meaning almost to zero or even to minus negative interest rates. The chances of you making any money by putting your money in a bank account are pretty low. So this one is not an ideal way, definitely. You're gonna be gaining 0.20%, if not even less, per year. And for that, obviously, you need a significant amount of money, you need significant capital to be able to gain some decent results. Because obviously, if you have 1K in the bank account, the savings one, and you get 10%, that is totally imaginary, 10% out of 1,000 would be 100 pounds. However, if you have 100,000, it will be a thousand. So you're getting the whole idea and you're still gonna be not even making any anywhere close to 10%. And currently, nowadays, because of the situation, you're gonna get 0.20% per year and you're gonna gain that every year rather than monthly or quarterly, which is another minus. And then we go to the fourth one, which is one of the my most favorite ones. And that is the dividend income. In other words, you're gonna get money because you have invested in a certain company. You buy shares of a company, which are worth X amount, and then you're gonna get money back in return 
because you have invested in a company. Most companies that provide dividends, if not all of them, are cash flow positive and balance sheet positive. Meaning, on their balance sheet, also on their income statement, on their cash flow statement, at the end of the month, they're always gonna be making money. And the whole idea is that they want to return back to the shareholders. They want to return them some money because they have plenty another way. And they also want to make it as an incentive for you to be able to keep your money. The whole idea of the dividend reinvested as well is in there. Meaning that if you have 100 pounds and you're gonna be getting 2%, you're gonna be getting two pounds on those 100%. And the whole bonus is that you are gonna be sleeping while doing it and you can get maybe quarterly, monthly, yearly, whatever the, the dividend uh, specific time is. You can get that reinvested into the company and your money from 100 pounds within the company is gonna to go to 102 pounds in the company just in a matter of a month or a quarter or a year. That is more than you can think from the previous example of income, which was the interest one. The other huge benefit of dividends is that they don't get paid out just every month or quarter or yearly. You can actually get dividends because companies are being bought out. For example, we all know Pfizer, or we all know Apple, we all know Tesla, we all know about these big companies. Well, they can decide that they want to cut their, their current stock price because they want to dilute the shares in a sense. They want to make sense of it and room for growth. What they do is gonna cut the price and that means that if the value of a share was 100 pounds, it's gonna go down to 10 or 100 if the value was, was cut by one to 10 or one to 100. But the idea is that once they do this, they're obliged by law by the American law, and it depends by some countries that you live in, UK also has one, to pay you a dividend based on the amount that they've cut down. So they're gonna pay you a dividend out of nowhere, in other sense. For example, if Fiverr did one when they were cutting down or, or getting purchased, I can't really remember, but they paid the dividend when they shouldn't have because of some other activities such as buyout. And from that dividend income that you're gonna be getting, another huge bonus is because you're gonna have the share itself, if the share of the company, your small pie that you're gonna be owning of this amazing company, if the price of it goes up, you're gonna make even bonus money, which is capital gains in another way. And that is my next point, capital gains. That is number five. The capital gains work like this. You buy a house, the area you live in becomes better for some reason. Maybe there's no trash outside, there's no homeless people in, <laughs> down the line or there's new buildings build, being built up every month. Either way, the value of your house is going to appreciate. Therefore, you're gaining capital gains because your capital has been basically put in as equity within that home. In other words, you can make more money by just owning a house down the line. Approximately, I think currently it's 10% per year for the US markets to, to there be an increase of an apartment, a house, a building, whatever, you name it. And the other part of capital gains is by making money from trading stocks or investing. So that was what I mentioned previously. You invest at a company and gain and get one share for 100 pounds, and then it increases by 10%, it's gonna be 110 already. These 10 pounds are gonna be your capital gains, which is ideal, which is nice. You made some money by almost not doing anything, just putting your money in the company which is brilliant. But guess what? There are some pretty significant taxes on this one, but there's also tax evasion. So it's down to how you can make it so that you save more money at the end of the day. For example, Warren Buffett himself, the biggest investor of all time, has made most of his money of only dividends and capital gains. Fun fact. Then we go to number six, and that is rental income. I think this one is pretty obvious. You have your house or your apartment, whatever. You don't want to live in it and you start renting it out for someone else. The whole idea is that you want to make sure that you either have a big chunk of cash to purchase something on a discounted price and then gives you the rent, or you need to have a credit score to be able to purchase with a mortgage, the house. The idea is that I'm gonna be making a totally separate video on this. So make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe so that you're gonna turn that notification bell on and receive notifications every time I upload a new video. But either way, you need a either good, good credit score which is above 600, 650, or 
more than 800 if you're up to a thousand it depends on where you're living but basically be able to get a good loan a good mortgage you need a credit card you need a good credit score you need to be able to prove to the institution that you're gonna take some money from that you're eligible that you can really manage your money and that you can handle debt or if you have the big chunk of cash you just go and purchase something with a discount and you start renting it out the ideal scenario is you take a mortgage because you have a good credit score you take it as a 30-year fixed mortgage you pay 3.3 interest, remember the interest income, now you're paying it to someone else. And the rent that you're gonna produce by your new rental property is gonna cover for the mortgage, maybe even give you some money. That's the ideal thing. You're basically gonna make money while you sleep and in 30 years or whatever, when you have paid down all of the mortgages or the mortgage that you had, you're gonna be making that as net profit money. Clever, isn't it? Party time. <laughs> It's time for the final one, which is for all of you who are super creative, who have some thoughts and ideas, but don't know how to execute them. Number seven is royalties. The royalty type of income is basically an income because of your ideas. You let someone else execute your idea, but they're agreeing or you're agreeing that they're going to do it. They're going to put their name on it. They're going to have the patent and so on. However, you're gonna get royalty because you allow them to take that idea from you. A very good example of that is, let's say KSI, you, we all know KSI, or any musician in the world, whoever it is. Nowadays, when they release a song, it's gonna be on Spotify or iTunes, or whatever. For every download or every time you play the song, they're gonna get a small portion of income, which is called royalties. The idea is that they still make money while they sleep. And the good thing is that can go on for forever. The only thing that is definitely required is that you're creative and that you know exactly how and who to contact when you have good ideas and such because you don't want to get scammed in a sense. Okay, that has been it for today's video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. It's been a really interesting topic of mine and make sure that you have at least three in, in your upper upper or whatever you call it. Make sure that you're gaining money from at least three sources if you want to become successful. That's a must. And make sure you leave in the comments down below which one you love the most and which one you're gonna get into. Because it's crucial that you find new opportunities every day. Maybe capital gains is for you, you wanna make money trading on the stock market. Or maybe rental income is for you, something a bit more safe. Or maybe even dividends. Why not make money while you sleep? Thank you all so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe, turn that notification bell on, follow me on all social media, you know my Instagram, my TikTok, you know my YouTube channel already because you're watching this video obviously, <laughs> and up to the next one. See you guys.